and welcome in to the ONTV Fantasy Football League, our week five recap already. We've already blown by through the season, mm. and uh, it's me, Joey Tysick, and Joe Johnson once again, but we're glad to have my co-host normally, Malik Hill, had a fantastic, fantastic fantasy football week. How does it feel to get your first win of the season? <laughs> It almost feels out of nowhere. Like, I, just disappointments week after week. And it all wasn't us, a narrow victory. Like, it was a blowout. Listen, all, all of a sudden, the Bengals become the Bengals again. Yeah. Josh Allen is consistent. He's been, like, my one consistent player. But Travis, uh, Travis Etienne plays great for the Jaguars. Mm. As George Kittle, three touchdowns. I, I had already pretty much won. And then George Kittle had three <laughs> touchdowns. Like, I, it, it, was, it was weird. Oh. It's, it's great. It was strange, though. Happy to have the win. Yeah. Happy to and have the, win. the thing that I wanted to point out the most um, is the very interesting stat that shows you how crazy fantasy football scoring can be. As I jump over to the laptop here, we have Malik is in ninth place, and he has the most points in the league. Now, I know he put up 200 this week. Uh, that jumped him up. But he is now ahead of the first place team in points. <laughs> and he is in points against. He is basically 240 points more scored against him yeah. than the top team. That means you have a terrible defense. Listen, you got to shore it up. <laughs> Your fantasy. I got to hire a new D coordinator. I got to find someone. This is, this is ridiculous. I don't know what's going on. And to me, that just shows you how fantasy football works sometimes. Well, you know, luck plays such a big role, and I, I almost, almost feel sorry for Drake's team because his point points this week would have beaten like six or seven other teams in the league. Yeah. But then you play against the team that cracks 200 for the first time this season in our league. Mm-hmm. Um, and that seems to work out more often than not. In the other league that I'm in, uh, a lot of times the team that finished third or fourth for the week gets a loss because yeah. they played the number one team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like Malik was saying, we he got scoring from everybody. Uh, Jamar Chase had a ginormous game. He had a video saying. game day. Yeah. He, had, yeah. he is, I think, one of two other players in fantasy football history to have, what is it, three 50-point fantasy games, mm. which is wild. It's him, Jerry Rice, and somebody I that have no incredible. idea who. Um, and this was an unusual week, too, that so many receivers slash tight ends had three touchdown yeah. games. Uh, if you were the owner of any one of those players, you won your week. Yeah, if you would have put that in a betting slip, you would have won, like, thousands of dollars, <laughs> which is crazy. And like you said, uh, Drake, on the other side, had the other one that started the week off with DJ Moore having 230 reception uh, receiving yards. And three touchdowns. What was going had, through your mind, Malik, uh, on Thursday night? You were like, I'm down by listen, 49 points. Jo- Joey texted me <laughs> and said, just to let you know, yeah, the person you're facing has. I said, here we go again, <laughs> yeah. basically. And I was like, I, this this is just ridiculous. Yeah. Even though I'm Malik's last place team, it's, just, it's, it's hilarious. And but then, I, I don't know, you get to Sunday and everything just flips around. Yeah. And that's without... Uh, CD Lamb doing anything. Yeah. He basically didn't do anything, and he was, I think, what, your second or third pick? I uh, think so. In the draft. Yeah. So, yeah. I, that's why I kept telling people, your your team is going to be scary um, at some point, um, even if it's maybe not on a consistent basis. But And I think Jacksonville should just stay in London. They, 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 they are London's team. They yes. played back-to-back yeah. games in London, won both of those, yeah. and uh, – Put up points. Yeah. They have a ton of fans there. Um, Did you see the person that was like in full Jaguar, like face paint and costume? That's yeah. like more intense than I've seen from actual Jar- Jaguars fans yeah. in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's some real fans over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We finally got a, a productive game as well from DeAndre Hopkins as well. Uh, yeah. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. And then on the other side, Drake's team, eh, they, they had a rough day. Justin Jefferson going out with an injury. He's now on IR, 
which yeah, is huge. Yeah, that's a huge loss. So he's out for four weeks. Losing so many big stars this season. C.J. Stroud struggled struggled against Atlanta's defense, which we've known is is pretty good against quarterbacks. Have you noticed? <laughs> it seems like ever since we talked Drake into starting Stroud, Fields has had yeah. pretty big games. Yeah, yeah pretty I feel much. Kind of bad. Yeah, Justin Fields is kind of on a streak right now. So that's, that's pretty scary. Um, going on to the next matchup, which somewhat came down to last night, is the halftime Honeybees defeating Sammy and the Green Buckeyes, one thirty-six to one thirteen point oh two. Sammy, his final hope laid on Christian Watson on Monday night, but no touchdown for Christian Watson off the horse collar. Uh, no potential game-winning touchdown. So Sammy needed a lot of points uh, from Watson. So it was it was pretty. Uh, hard to do, I guess. He had hope earlier in the day. He's like, I still got a chance. But yeah. uh, Watson just came up short. Mm -hmm. And as we've been saying all season long, Tyreek Hill is that guy. And Becky continues to ride the coattails of Tyreek Hill. Even when Tua didn't have, you know, an outstanding game per yeah. se. He threw two interceptions. You know what was interesting? And this is really unfortunate because uh, – Achan is is now hurt and will miss multiple games, but it looked like Hill and Achan were sort of had this friendly competition because, as I was watching, you know, parts of the game on Red Zone, the announcers would say, "Well, Achan just uh, ran like twenty one miles an hour uh, on that breakout touchdown that he had," and then Hill would like answer, and it seemed like it was going back and forth between the two, and I'm like, "Oh, this is fun." And then I woke up this morning and saw the update that Achan hurt his knee and will miss several games. Uh, yeah. But they got they got plug and play like someone's out. Uh, someone else will step up and, and play. So uh, it's unfortunate because Achan was really, really exciting to watch these past few weeks. Yeah. And I think Sammy's kind of feeling the, uh, the brunt of a lot of fantasy players this year. Running backs are getting hurt left and right. Yeah. He was without Saquon Barkley. James Conner got hurt in this game. He might be out for a couple weeks. Nobody really knows yet. And Najee Harris just kind of stinks. Yeah, man. He's just not doing anything. Malik, you're the you're the local former Steelers fan. How how do they look to you? I know they, they beat my Baltimore Ravens. Listen, which that, is that is one of wild. the strangest games. George Pickens had a pretty good game. He's on my bench. So Yeah. I I don't know, man. They're Mike Tomlin said he's not making any moves on with the offensive coordinator, but he said they're making changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I I don't know. It, right. It's weird. Mm. Yeah, it's wild. Um, so Sammy still in third place, sitting at three and two. Becky getting back to the winning column. She's in sixth place at two and three. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty easy matchup. Then I had to play my wife. <laughs> and that's Did you always sleep on the couch. That's always nerve wracking. Uh, she beat me in our ESPN league last week, uh, so I got some revenge this week. Putting up 127 points, she had 120. Oof. Both of us having a couple game, uh, big games from a couple people and struggles elsewhere. My big one was definitely Anthony Richardson going out early with another injury. I think that might be his big concern: is staying healthy, the way that he plays the game. He looks really good when he's in, but so far he's only put one full game together. Yeah, he he has to learn how to protect himself. Yeah. He's so physically gifted mm -hmm. that I would trust my strength too, but yeah. now it's starting to come back at him. So, yeah, he he has to learn how to slide, avoid contact at times. Right. I got Cooper Cup back, which was fantastic. He just looked like he didn't miss a step. Yeah. No, which is very, very good for me. Uh, Christian McCaffrey had a very pedestrian Christian McCaffrey game. He found the end zone, but didn't have to do much else as they blew out the Dallas Cowboys. That was shocking to me. It really was. And it's like you said, Joey, I'm sure there were a lot of people just waiting for Dallas to show their true colors. They looked pretty dominant heading into this week, and then they were embarrassed. Yeah. Embarrassed on television. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, as you alluded to earlier, Devon A. Chan had another big game, and he got hurt. And there's thoughts that he's going to be out for a few games. Uh, hopefully, don't put him on IR, but mm. I don't know. I was riding the hot hand with him. He had 151 rushing yards again with a rushing touchdown. I still don't know if I believe 
that he's going to continuously do this. I feel like there's going to be some disappointment there, mm. but you're going to have to take the punches because what he can do is win you a week yeah. at times. Now, I got to say, uh, I got to compliment your opponent because her team was crippled by bye weeks and mm -hmm. still managed to put up some decent points. Yeah. Uh, my team had no excuse. I wasn't crippled by bye weeks <laughs> and once again had one of the lowest outputs in the league. Uh, so she did the best she could uh, with what she had to work with. Uh, yeah. Fell just short. You got a ton of points from your Saints defense. Holy yeah. moly, that 24. was a yeah. difference between winning and losing. Yeah. Wow. I also had a ton of points on the bench again. Puka Nakua, I wasn't sure how he was going to do with Cooper Cup being back. He's going to be just fine. Adam Thielen, rolling back the clock. Really I was at that game, and that was the only thing the Lions – did not do was cover Adam Thielen. Yeah, the, those underneath routes, he kept getting open over and over again. Yeah, it was mm. it was starting to get frustrating. Good news for me though, with Anthony Richard being Richardson getting hurt, Joe Burrow did look very healthy in his last game. Looked good finally. Hopefully, he can continue that uh, going forward. Mm. But glad to get the win. Technically, I'm in second place, but three and two doesn't doesn't really mean a whole lot right now. Next up, we have my brother's team beating Ian's team. We got a couple dud games, uh, these last two matchups. Uh, my brother's team uh, benefiting off of Matthew Stafford and Stephon Diggs, along with Brees Hall finally being unleashed for the Jets, yeah. which was fun to watch. Um, and then Ian's team again. He, he's just been struggling ever since with the injuries. Aaron Jones has been out for multiple games now. Now, this is interesting. So... In my other league that I'm in, I faced a team that had Aaron Jones, and he started him too. So I'm wondering how late was the announcement that Jones wouldn't play because it's odd that these two different teams started him and got a big goose egg. Yeah, well, I know that a lot of the time it was pretty questionable up until the game. Mm -hmm. A.J. Dillon is usually rostered in most leagues, so you can't get him last second. And then if you look at Ian's team, he might have just thrown in the towel for this week. Because uh, his bench is all oh, zero. He had yeah. nobody to swap in. Yeah. Deontay Johnson on IR. Everybody else on bye. I'm on Ross oh, St. Brown. Got ruled out. Brutal. So he might have just said, I'm going to go with it. And if he doesn't play, he doesn't play. Wow. <laughs> so I still think Ian's team, if he can get healthy, Eckler is there. Herbert's there. Uh, Deontay Johnson coming off IR. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Like, I think Ian's team is going to be okay. At some I wish point. I would have faced him this week. <laughs> Yeah, and then my brother's team, kind of the same thing they've been doing. Like, it, he's been up and down. He has a couple guys that have been going off, like Stefan Diggs. Chris Olave has struggled the last two weeks with Derek Carr coming back. Um, Ramondre Stevenson, I, I don't even want to talk that about that. That entire Patriots, Patriots offense is just there. They're, it's over. Yeah. It, it looks it's like bad. it's officially over. What you want to do is start all players facing the Patriots and yeah. the Broncos they are giving up tons of fantasy yeah. points. Yeah, it, it's it's bad. Thirty four to nothing is that that type of loss rarely happens in the NFL. Yeah, like a, it, and a Belichick led team. Yeah, and it's not like the Saints are an offensive juggernaut. <laughs> they they barely scored over like sixteen seventeen points. Right in exactly. most games. Mm. And like I it's said, hard for him to, for them to hit twenty. They did that with Chris Olave having what was it? One touchdown catch, two two catches for twelve yards and a touchdown. That's nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's wild. The Patriots, a lot of people are starting to call for Bill Belichick's name. I don't know if anybody ever thought that would happen. That's wild. Listen, a after Brady left, there were people that said it could be over quickly. Yeah. And I I'm honestly not 100% surprised. I'm I'm surprised about how undisciplined and just out of it they look. Yeah. They, they don't look like any type of team that plays for Bill Belichick. But, hey, yeah. it, it all has to come to an end at some point. You know, during, you know, Brady's tenure, there was that discussion, you know, is it is Brady or Belichick to get the credit for their success? And, boy, Brady. He deserves is, more credit than Bill, it looks like. I at this think point. so. Yeah. He was mm -hmm. a difference maker. Even if it's just like 60-40, Tom Brady yeah. deserves some more credit. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, <sighs> Tracy's top-notch team. Gets it done again. Although she would have lost to a majority of the winners this week, she got to play the <laughs> Hollywood blockbusters who only put up 79 points. As you alluded to, you would have beaten Ian Witherspoon, but that's the only team you could have beaten. Now, you know, I try to have fun with fantasy football, and I don't, 
you know, you could just put your studs in and let them play or whatever. But to me, that's not a whole lot of fun. What I like to do is I like to look up matchups. I like to see where defenses rank against quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and try to play those matchups. Yahoo gives you a little color indicator, like if it's green, start them. If it's red, bench them. And so I try to gather all that information and make the best determination I can. And every instinct, every decision I made this week was wrong. Brutal. So I said, sometimes you got to go a little beyond that. The, uh, the only one that I can really fault you on is the Sky Moore play. But it, it, here's my, my argument is, my defense is that uh, Minnesota was ranked like 27th or 28th their defense against wide receivers. So I was expecting Mahomes to have a four touchdown game. I was expecting more to get in on the fun and that is not what happened. And so, so more really hurt me. Um, and so, you know, on my bench, I, I, I got, I was, you know, after Addison dropped a big zero last week, he mm -hmm. f was relegated to my bench. Yeah. And I, can't, I can't fully fault you for that one. Cause that, that, that just stings as a fantasy owner when you see a big zero. Yeah. And so, you know, he follows up the zero point game with 18 points. Mm -hmm. Myers, who I'm really starting to like a lot. Uh, yeah, you I, might, you might have to start him over Sky Moore. Yeah. They, they target Jacoby Myers a, they, a lot. Between Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers, they funnel all their passes yeah. to those two yeah. guys. Now, keep in mind, you know, Sky Moore's not someone I have locked in my starting lineup. I, right. I only put him in because of the matchup. You mm -hmm. better believe he's going to the bench this week. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's going to get replaced by one of those guys on my bench. Mm -hmm. uh, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown on the Hollywood Blockbusters. He looked like he was having fun out there. He yeah. caught a touchdown. Um, and so there, you know, there were some positive performances, especially on my bench. Uh, now here's, here's my dilemma. I'm kind of curious. So my third pick of the draft was Mahomes, And I was expecting three touchdowns a game from Mahomes. Purdy, who is on my bench has been out playing Mahomes. What would you do? I, I don't know what to do. I, in, in retrospect, it yeah, when you when you when you look back, it makes sense that you took Mahomes, but nobody realized that the Chiefs really didn't have a number one receiver. Yeah. Like mo the past few years it hasn't mattered because they've able they've been able to just go receiver by committee and yeah. have Travis Kelsey be the or number Kelsey, one. Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey. This is yeah. the first year where it really looks like it matters that they don't have yeah. a number one. Mm -hmm. Chiefs just don't yeah. look like that. And Brock Purdy has like three number ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the Chiefs are starting to use Isaiah Pacheco a little bit more too. Yeah. Yeah. And running the ball. But I'm facing a, a, a quarterback uh, dilemma. I, I'm very, very tempted. You might have to, to start playing Purdy, Purdy which is yeah. And, honestly, and it kills me. Honestly, I know you like to keep two good quarterbacks. But Mahomes has so much value as a name. Yeah. You might be able to throw him out there for a trade somewhere. We'll see. I, I might just hang on to him until a, one of their bye weeks uh, comes and goes, and then I might look to mm -hmm. unload him like I'm jumping off the sinking Titanic. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of optimistic. But, you know, I headed into this game really nervous about facing Tracy. She's and mostly because of her luck. She's been had some tremendous luck. Yeah. Uh, Goff has been playing lights out. Yep. Montgomery. Yep. Who who could have predicted this performance from the Lions? Montgomery. He's just been one Fantastic. of the top backs yeah. in the league. Yeah. She has uh, Sam Laporte on her bench too. Yeah. That that's the part that was hilarious. She, to me. she has the top yeah. two tight ends in the league. Well, do you remember last week she started <laughs> a tight end in her flex position, didn't she? Yeah. Uh, she could have done that again this this week and got yeah. some more points. Um, so yeah, so she has a, a solid roster and I was nervous, uh, going into this one. I, I feel like had I made some right decisions, I, I might've had a chance against her, but like I said, I'm trying to have fun with my lineup and, and do some research. But sometimes when fantasy football, you, you play your studs regardless of matchup mm -hmm. and hope for the best. I think we have some advice from a good friend of yours. Yeah, I should do the opposite. I should. If every instinct you have is wrong, then the opposite 
would have to be right. <laughs> would have to be. Listen. Exactly. Yeah. No flaw in that logic. No flaw. Take some advice from Jerry Seinfeld. Can I just time. say I didn't know it was possible to get a negative point in fantasy? Oh, yeah. Both of yep. your defenses got negative one. I did yeah. not know that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is hilarious. Technically, and Dallas of all defenses to get a oh negative. My God. Micah oh, Parsons but... couldn't get pressure. Yeah. Oh, this is wild. I mean, God. technically, you think about it, like if a, if a running back or something fumbles, they get negative points, and then they get hurt on the play or something, they can end with a negative game or something like that. So Yeah. It happens. Not not too often. It's usually more often with defenses that it'll happen. And again, you know, I was trying to get too cute with my defenses. I, you know, I, I have the Niners, who was really highly ranked before the season. I drafted them in yeah, both they gave my you 16 leagues. points. <laughs> but they hadn't been giving me a ton of points, and so I started looking at matchups, and I said, well, Washington has put up a couple double-digit performances, and they're playing the lowly Bears and the lowly so bears. <laughs> I start them against the Bears. The yeah. Bears blow up. Washington gives up 40 points. I get negative points. Meanwhile, the Niners on my bench get double digits. It, it, it's so frustrating. Yeah. I swear sometimes I hate this game. <laughs> um, going, Looking at the waiver wire real quick, uh, as usual, there's some guys that are out there that you might be interested in. Zach Moss is, like, interesting because – it seems like they're slowly ramping up Jonathan Taylor's workload. And Zach Moss had his best game of the season. I think uh, Sammy's probably kicking himself that he dropped him uh, mm, cool. maybe a week early. Uh, Tutu Atwell, even with Cup coming back, he did end up getting a touchdown. He did, but that was it. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to struggle, but he could still have a breakout game here or there. Um, Josh Downs, I think, is the most interesting one. Malik, you're the big college guy. What did you see from Josh Downs in college that makes you excited for the NFL game? He's been having Uh, a couple good weeks. I thought it was really uh, cool to see at his height, which is he's like 5'10 at most. He's probably like 5'9". Yeah. He had a better contested catch rate than like most big receivers in college football. Mm -hmm. Like he was really great at running go routes and going up and getting it. Yeah. So I don't – they really haven't used him to do that really. They Right. They've used him like on more short and intermediate routes, getting mm-hmm. him in space. But they should, I hope, start taking advantage of him going deep because that was one of his specialties in college. Yeah. If you need tight end help, Hunter Henry is out there uh, for New England, even though New England stinks. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of been <laughs> Listen, their, their primary go-to guy. I think neither no quarterback maybe in this league can save that ship from yeah. sinking right now. They are like the play calling – Mac Jones isn't great, but it seems like he's just in a horrible position mm-hmm. every time he steps out there. Like yeah. there's just nothing. There's nothing there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I do see a name on the the waiver wire here that is very tempting, and if if I have room to drop someone, I'm tempted. Even though there's another one of those teams that is just terrible right now. But uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, he uh, yep. he I really like how looked, he's looked pretty solid yeah. mm-hmm. uh, out of Youngstown State. Yeah, and so he he might be a waiver wire target this week. Yeah, there's there's some talk that Javante Williams might be back this week, which would be a mess for that team. But just the eye test, McLaughlin looks like the best guy. Mm. Um, I would say number one waiver priority this week, KJ Osborne, mm. with Jefferson oh, going on right. IR. Yeah, yeah. Addison maybe become the number one. But maybe not this first game because KJ Osborne has a better repertoire with Kirk Cousins. Um, He's going to keep the chains moving. So Addison's role might so- kind of stay the same, but Osborne, I would ex- uh, I would expect to see more production out of him as a go-to guy. For the only thing that weeks. makes me nervous about Osborne is he seems to have a case of the dropsies. Uh, early on yes. in the season, I've seen him drop some wide open passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the only thing that makes me nervous. But like you said, with Jefferson on IR, there's got to, I mean, I could hear the stampede to the waiver wire to try and pick this guy up. Yeah. I think he'll, he'll be the number one option. Um, other than that, it's pretty, pretty lonely. Uh, Logan Thomas, another good tight end, I guess. Uh, he got 11 targets for Washington last week. Washington though, they spread the ball around so much. I, I have a hard time trusting anybody yeah. for that team. Okay. Ooh, 
Moving on to the week <laughs> six matchups. My wish came true. Wow. Uh, looks like I'll be facing Ian's ingenious team. But unfortunately, uh, you're facing him when the Chargers <laughs> are coming back from by. Exactly. I get to play up against Sammy for the outright second place spot, which is going to be fun. Um, I don't know. I didn't look at buys. He has Christian Watson on by. He still has James Conner in there. I don't think he's going to play, so Sammy's going to have to figure something out for that. And honestly, I'm hoping that Saquon Barkley comes back just because I think that would be exciting, mm -hmm. make it more fun. I'm, of course, without Devon Achan. And then I have a dilemma with my ride receivers. i got to figure out who I want to play, who I want to sit, because I have a, a slew of good players. Um, so that's, that's going to be some decision-making that I'll have to do, but that should be... Malik, Fun you're matchup. stepping up uh, yep. as the yep. giant killer. Uh, I if, Correct me if I'm wrong. We may have to go to the tape, but I think I predicted Malik's win this past week. Uh, right now, you seem to be favored. Mm -hmm. Your projection is higher than Tracy, but I don't know if you guys have made your final roster adjustments yet. Sometimes she did. you'll wait till after the, the uh, waiver wire. She did make her moves, and she does have the double tight ends in she right now. She did put her tight ends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. And she, ah, the scary thing is she has Raheem Mostert and Devon Achan is going to most likely be out. Mm. So Mostert's back to that number one guy. And uh, Dallas is playing the Chargers defense. So that might, or the Chargers. So that might be another uh, tough one for the Dallas defense. New York is playing Philly. So oh, that'll be, yeah, yeah that might be tough. tough for you too. Um, But yeah, that, that should be a fun matchup. Jared Goff is going to be on the road. So we don't see Jared Goff, you know, usually perform as well as he does at home, but it is nice, hopefully nice weather down in Tampa Bay, so we'll see about that. Malik, you have Allen facing the Giants, who do not look real great right now, so yeah. you should get should be a, pretty a good one. couple of passing touchdowns, maybe a rushing touchdown. <laughs> the only scary thing is that they just blow them out and, like, they sit Josh Allen. <laughs> that's, that's maybe the only scary thing. Uh, hopefully. I can get good weeks out of my running backs, too, because Pacheco plays Denver, and Denver's defense mm – -hmm is super soft right now. Yeah, you got some yeah. nice matchups. Yeah. And then, like we said, Joe's taking on Ian's team. Ian's team has not been uh, completed yet because he's got to rearrange everybody coming back from bye. Maybe he gets a Monroe St. Brown back. So, Joe, you may have Ian at full strength, potentially. Now, uh, here's – dang it, I'm looking at this, and, I, again, I'm facing this quarterback dilemma. Look who the Chiefs are facing this week. Yeah. Denver. Mm -hmm. So how do I bench Mahomes in favor of Purdy with I, the Chiefs facing Denver? Yeah. Purdy, Sam, they play at Cleveland, and Cleveland has a good defense. Yeah, yeah. Cleveland uh, is yeah. probably the most pressure that San Francisco has played. Purdy, Purdy didn't have a great game when they played at the Rams. Yeah. So his last away game wasn't great. As he, of right now, Mahomes sort of, is in my starting lineup. He also sort of struggled against Pittsburgh as well, who put in a lot of pressure. That, well, that, that game was kind of over yeah, like after the, game, the first half. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and Cleveland, they just they pressure the quarterback a lot, so it'll yeah. be a good test for him. I'm uh, really hoping Addison benefits from uh, Jefferson being sidelined. I'm hoping for a big game. The thing that makes me nervous is when he's when Addison's on the field with Jefferson. Jefferson's the one drawing double coverage. Now will Addison be the guy getting double covered? I don't know. Are they going to try and shut him down? But I'm hoping Addison benefits from uh, the temporary loss of Jefferson. Yeah, that, that'll that be an interesting one to watch uh, for sure. But um, the Chargers, well, again, like we said, though, the Chargers are playing Dallas. So if Dallas's defense steps up, maybe those Chargers will struggle a little bit. Yeah. Just kind of a, a wait and see. And then uh, my brother is playing Becky, which Becky's favored to win pretty favorably right now. Um, I'm not really seeing. Oh, my brother has Jam Jameson Williams in right now. I'll, I'm curious if he'll end up putting Jalen Waddle in. I would assume Ken Walker is going to get the start over Ramondre Stevenson as well because, like I said, he stinks right now, and I wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. Uh, she does have the uh, stack of uh, Tua and Tyreek. They are going uh, against Carolina. Against Carolina. <laughs> so, so, yeah, should see some points there. Um, 
Pollard, man, Pollard's been sort of hit and miss and more miss than hit. Like, yeah. you know, he had a two touchdown game earlier in the season, but he really hasn't done much of anything since. And, and the thing that's really disconcerting is, is that when they had a lead, they like basically benched him and brought in backups, which just hurts yeah. his numbers. So I don't know, man. Pollard is sort of a, a frustrating part of that Dallas offense. Yeah, and he hasn't been as efficient as he was last year when he was sharing a backfield with Zeke. So maybe yeah. that him becoming a number one guy is a little bit harder than he thought. Mm. And then finally, we have Drake taking on Marie. And Drake, again, he, he's got some injury bug going on now. If uh, Roshan Johnson can come out of uh, concussion protocol, he may be the number one guy in Chicago. And Minnesota's defense, it's okay, but it's not great. Um, you can't replace Justin Jefferson, but Drake can can definitely try, that's for sure. Um, mm. And he's probably going to stick with C.J. Stroud, knowing him, but... Uh, Playing New Orleans, I'd be a little nervous about that. Uh, so we'll just have to kind of wait and see. I think I would take Justin Fields against Minnesota. I would, mm-hmm. too. I think he's going to put – even if they lose, I think he puts up some points. It's yeah. a division matchup, too, so there's yeah. a lot on the line here. Yeah. And then Marie, she'll get back uh, the Seattle wide receivers, maybe Amari Cooper if she's feeling it against San Francisco, but that's that's a tough matchup. Um, so she'll have some lineup decisions to make. Uh, maybe Travis Kelsey. There's a chance because it's a short week. Travis Kelsey might be out for this Thursday night game. That's something to watch out for, too, Ooh. which is a little nerve-wracking. Uh, something's catching my eye on uh, Drake's bench. He has Daniel Jones, New York Giant quarterback, on the bench. And uh, that's to me, seems like a wasted spot. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. even know how much longer the Giants are going to go with him because he is not looking good, so... Uh, I never understand the logic of having three quarterbacks on your roster. Two gives yeah. you enough headaches, mm-hmm. but uh, I would cut ties with Daniel Jones and put someone else in that roster spot. Yeah, we'll probably make a recommendation to him. That's for sure. Okay, that's uh, that's week five and uh, upcoming week six. Malik, hopefully you. Uh, I'm, I'm rooting for you at this point. We got to knock off Tracy. Five Listen, and zero is too far. <laughs> If I if I beat Tracy, am I able to change my team name? Yeah, of course. If I beat Tracy, I I think I might change my team name to <laughs> something more hopeful. Yeah, the Malik's hopeful team. Yeah, I know Tracy listens to this podcast. Malik's upcoming team. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna hear us ganging up against her. But <laughs> hey, Tracy, listen, whoever's at the top, that it, it yeah, is what it your is. Your fair game it just happens to be Tracy. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's just kind of what's gonna happen. I I think you should go with Giant Killer if uh, if, <laughs> if you beat him. Well, leak giant killers. <laughs> so, everybody, make uh, put in your waiver claims if you need to. Make your wa- roster adjustments with the. Uh, it's only two teams on by this week, luckily. So, two not teams too, or two games. Two teams. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I can't remember the second team. I know it's the Packers and somebody else. But, oh. So, hopefully, uh, you can get better sleep than this. Anyway, big day tomorrow. Then, picking busy B. I should get some sleep. This is gonna be our uh, most. I'm sorry. <laughs> the most fantasy. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>